Okay, so in this lecture, we are going to begin a series of discussions of uh, proton NMR, uh, which is uh, a very important form of spectroscopy used uh, primarily to elucidate unknown structures of compounds um, in <clears throat> organic synthesis, uh, but can also be used uh, for many experiment types, such as kinetics, etc. cetera. Uh, so one important part of NMR uh, is the chemical shift of a proton of interest. Um, and the chemical shift relative to a standard is going to give us information about the nearby functional groups relative to the proton of interest. So there are some new vocabulary terms that we must first familiarize ourselves with. Um, so uh, those that are protons shifted towards uh, large PPM values on uh, NMR spectrum are said to be downfield, whereas protons uh, that are at low chemical shift values are upfield. Another way that we will refer to downfield protons is that they have a high frequency, whereas upfield protons are going to have low frequency. Protons are downfield because they are deshielded, or they are not shielded from the magnetic field of the NMR instrument. Um, because they are electron poor. And for example, being electron poor could mean the proton is near an electronegative atom, such as an oxygen or nitrogen, uh, or the proton is near a pi bond and experiences something called anisotropy. Electron-rich protons are shielded by their electron density and they show up at lower frequencies. So these are generally going to be electron-rich because they are either far from electronegative atoms and or far from pi bonds. So I'll go through and give you some specific chemical shift values. Uh, you'll want to investigate as to whether or not your professor requires you to memorize these. Uh, they're simply ranges, okay? And the specific chemical shift cannot be known unless you take the NMR of a compound. Uh, but generally, there are some characteristic ranges uh, that do us well in terms of problem solving. So, <clears throat> A proton that is very, very deshielded, perhaps the most of anything you'll see in introductory organic uh, is that of a carboxylic acid. Where this hydrogen here, okay, uh, is bound to an electronegative oxygen, it is nearby a second electronegative oxygen, and it is near a pi system. So carboxylic acids generally show up around 12 or so. Uh, a similar functional group, minus one oxygen is an aldehyde, where now the hydrogen is connected to a less electronegative atom, which is carbon. Uh, but still, because of the nearby pi bond and being bound to the sp2 carbon, okay, it experiences anisotropy and uh, has a chemical shift between 9 and 10. Uh, another very important range, perhaps the most important for you to recognize, is the aryl region. And aryl means that there's a hydrogen bound to an sp2 carbon of an aromatic ring, such as benzene. Those show up between six and a half and eight. Very similar to an aryl proton is that on an alkene. So not necessarily an aromatic ring, but an isolated alkene is known as a vinyl proton. And these show up between four and a half and six and a half. So generally speaking, being on an sp2 atom is going to cause the proton to be deshielded. 
because of the pi system. So if you have a hydrogen that's on an sp2, carbon, oxygen, et cetera, then it's generally four and a half, maybe five, uh, or more downfield from there. And there's this nice little dividing line around PPM of four and a half or five, where lower chemical shift values generally correspond to hydrogens that are connected to sp3 atoms. Those will be more upfield signals. And one example of a more upfield signal um, between three and four and a half, this is known as the electronegative region where you have some electronegative atom and it is bound to carbon and the hydrogen of interest or the protons showing up on the spectrum is one away from that electronegative atom. And of course, if that electronegative atom, for example, um, is fluorine, it will be further downfield as it is more electronegative than something like oxygen. And oxygen is more electronegative than something like bromine, which would show up more around three. Okay. Now putting two oxygens adjacent to that carbon would further shift the proton downfield, but it's not a perfectly additive effect. So please just think of these as general ranges and not specific uh, values to memorize. So between two and three, we have this regime of, of proton types that are generally allylic, uh, or there's some sort of unsaturation, maybe a Cl double bond or a CC double bond, or even a benzene ring. But the proton that is allylic or benzylic is not on the sp2 atom, it is on an sp3 that is one away. So here I'm sketching the allylic, benzylic, uh, or alpha protons. And finally, okay, we have the aliphatic region, which just means typical sp3 carbons uh, that have a proton of interest. And that proton will show up usually between zero and one and a half, uh, assuming that it's only flanked by other sp3 carbons. And there are no pi bonds uh, or electronegative atoms that are close by. One thing I do want you to know in this region is that if you have more protons, such as a methyl group on a carbon, it will be more shielded or at lower chemical shift than if you have fewer protons, like a CH2, methylene would be further downfield slightly than methyl and methine, CH is the most downfield of that series. So using chemical shift, uh, we are able to sort of piece together the functional groups to elucidate an unknown structure given an NMR spectrum. So it is important to know these ranges, and there are many other proton types that I do not have on here, but these are the most common in introductory organic chemistry. So a couple example problems that you might see on an exam um, include the following, where I'm simply going to rank here number one being the most deshielded or the most downfield proton. So what we have is an allylic proton that is one away from a pi system. Okay, so that should be between two and two and a half usually ppm. Perhaps it could be closer to three because there's another electronegative oxygen not too far away. Okay, uh, here we have our electronegative heteroatom, oxygen, and adjacent to that, so this is in the electronegative region, which I showed above, was between three and four and a half. Usually it's about four for a methoxy group like this. This carbon is sp2, and so the proton on the sp2 carbon is vanillic and usually those show up between four and a half and six and a half. And finally, this methyl here is only bound to other sp3 carbons or one other sp3 carbon. So it's aliphatic 
and the chemical shift would probably be around one. Okay. So if we say that number one is the most deshielded, then that's going to be the vanillic proton first, followed by the proton adjacent to the electronegative atom, followed by the allylic proton and the aliphatic proton on the sp3 carbon that is far from pi bonds and far from electronegative atoms, that is going to be the most upfield. One more example problem. <clears throat> So here, uh, number one is going to be the proton with the lowest frequency. Remember that low frequency means the most shielded or that which is most electron rich, which produces the most upfield chemical shift. So uh, the proton of an aldehyde, this is generally around nine or 10 because it is near an electronegative atom, it is on an sp2 carbon, and of course, near a pi system that experiences anisotropy. The proton on the arrow ring here is quite downfield. It would be between six and a half and eight, the arrow regime. The proton adjacent to nitrogen right, is one away from an electronegative atom. And we said that that would be around three or so ppm. Proton D is aliphatic or is on sp3 carbon and is only adjacent to another sp3 carbon. So that should be around one, maybe a little higher. And then HC is on an sp3 carbon as well but it is benzylic or one away from a pi system in the ring. And so we would assume that that would be around two, maybe three ppm. Okay. So the lowest frequency is going to be HD, followed by the benzylic proton HC, and then the proton adjacent to the electronegative atom. Finally, the aryl proton and the aldehyde are the higher chemical shift because these carbons are sp2 hybridized. So using chemical shift is very important for piecing together uh, a molecule given NMR data. And we will see it in subsequent videos the value of knowing chemical shift once you've constructed some fragments for what you believe to be the molecule of interest from the data. So uh, for more practice on chemical shift and other NMR concepts, you can uh, check out unit one of my Orgo 2 course guide uh, at chemguides.com.